ES Audio. From the Evening Standard in London, I'm Rochelle Travers, and this is The Leader. After an 11 year hiatus, N Dubs have performed, announcing a national arena tour and releasing a new single to boot. The group had three successful albums together between 2008 and 2010 Uncle B, Against All Odds, and Love Live Life. But times have changed since the Camden-born band first burst onto the scene. Music has evolved and each member has had their fair share of controversy in the media. So, is there still a place for N-Dubs in 2022? Here to tell us more is the Evening Standard's Vicky Jessup. So Vicky, for those who aren't familiar with N-Dubs, just explain exactly who they are. So uh, N-Dubs are a hip-hop group from Camden. They were really big in the noughties, so they started out as schoolmates at Haverstock in Camden, made up of um, Phaser, that's his stage name, uh, real name Richard Rawson, and Dappy, who was, is called Kostadinos Kondostavlos, and they were, you know, rapping together in high school, and then they thought they needed a female vocalist, so they asked Dappy's cousin Tula or Tulisa to join them, and thus was born N-Dubs. They kind of when they started out, they had a few iterations of names, you know, trying things on for size. Uh, they started life as the Little Rinses crew. They went then, they wanted to call the, their group Hakuna Matata, but unfortunately Disney didn't allow that. So they then became NW1 and finally they became N-Dubs. And um, yeah, they had a kind of like a bit of a stratospheric rise into pop culture, to be honest. They started out in 2006. They were unlabeled. You know, they were quite big on the underground rap scene. And then when they got signed to a label, that was Polydor, um, their career just pretty much took off. You know, it went stratospheric, especially between 2008 and 2011. You know, their debut album was massively like critically acclaimed that's called Uncle B they won several awards they won the MOBO awards their albums went platinum you know uh, they had two top 10 albums 12 UK top 40s um, so things were going really well for them basically and then in 2011 um, they basically just called it off very abruptly to work on their own stuff and yeah this is the first we've heard of them since then so uh, about a week ago we suddenly got an announcement they dropped a video of them riding over London in a helicopter the helicopter landed out they come and they suddenly have a new single that's just been released called Charmer and uh, a stadium tour which is happening in November so yes all go for M-Dubs again. Did they have success other than in the UK? Primarily in the UK, to be honest, but they definitely did have international success. Like this was a big band. They had millions of, you know, downloads, millions of sales, loads of views, that kind of stuff. So, yeah, I, I think I think a little bit of both, but mostly in the UK, just because Dappy and Tulisa especially became, you know, so uh, controversial later in the tabloids and stuff. So I'd say they, they're primarily better than in the UK, especially because the, the sound that they provided was like something quite different and quite unique. You know, hip hop wasn't really that mainstream in the mid noughties. It was more like, you know, underground, quite niche. But end was kind of really brought that into the mainstream and made it very popular and um yeah so they were they were they were trailblazers so i think yeah most mostly uk but also international appeal too why were they so popular here uh, they offered something quite different i guess they were quite like urban i guess they're very much like working class they had quite a unique sound like rhyme wasn't really too mainstream at that point in the uk but what ended up quite, did quite well was that they they were quite playful with like genres they blended them quite a lot like having Talisa's voice in the group kind of added a counterpoint to the men's rapping that made the songs a lot more melodic which made them stand out as well and they also did quite a lot to like incorporate elements of pop music like they had strings and like big beats like some big value productions um that also like gave their songs quite a mainstream appeal as well yeah they, they were trailblazers and I think I think um people tend to forget that just because they they were on the scene for such a comparatively short time and have been so quiet since then but yeah they definitely influenced a lot of a lot of artists A lot has happened in the decades since they split. Just explain some of the controversies the different band members have had. Yeah, I mean, uh, unfortunately, there has been quite a lot. Like, even when they were in the band, they didn't really, like, shy away from confrontation. Um, I guess that's kind of part of the charm of N-Dubs, you know, that didn't really hurt their ratings at all with their fans. But, you know, Tulisa had a 
quite a memorable feud with LaRue. Dappy had a infamous incident when he was on BBC Radio 1 and he stole a listener's phone number from the studio um, after she basically like made fun of him on air and sent her threatening messages. And then when they broke up, you know, that was quite sudden. They announced they wanted to go uh, on a break to kind of work on their own solo stuff. And then Tulisa, you know, she was in the X Factor. She was a judge, but unfortunately, um, probably what people remember best about her uh, now is that she was involved in quite a grubby uh, yeah a grubby kind of almost sting operation which was where she was arrested on suspicion of supplying class a drugs that was in 2013 and of course like the papers it was all over the media like it became this massive thing although the case was like dismissed in court and the person who helped set her up um the fake shake they called him um basically was sentenced to 15 months in prison for for his role in this but her brand was quite tarnished by that and she hasn't really recovered since like she's been very quiet she's kind of gone to ground a bit and Dappy also he his notoriety shall we say has overtaken his his musical legacy in recent years you know in 2013 he was found guilty of assault and affray um, after being you know involved in a brawl at a petrol station and in 2017 you know there was an altercation with his partner where he admitted that he like reached for a butcher's knife which is also a little bit no, that wasn't great. Um, and also he liked to go on social media, kind of calling out people that didn't like end ups and offering to fight them. So all these things basically like, yeah, they, they, they've become more famous, I would say, for their for their controversy than for their musical legacy in the past decade. So that's what makes this launch especially interesting. You know, they're rebooting essentially like will the British public and like their fans and stuff, will they remember how good end ups were or will they just remember all oh, these people are like, kind of like celebrities who like to cause trouble essentially? Let's go to the ads. Stay there to hear more about N-Dubs' new single and national tour. Whilst you're here, why not give the leader a rate and follow? Welcome back. N-Dubs released their first single in over a decade last night called Charmer. Vicky, what do you think of the new single? <laughs> um, well, I thought it was bad talking about it as not a diehard end up fan, but um, yeah, I, I've had a listen and you can definitely hear like the echoes of that, you know, old music. You know, the, this was a band that was big a decade ago and music has definitely moved on since then. And it does feel like something that you would have heard on MTV 10 years ago, you know, like it's very much that same kind of, that same kind of vibe. And I think... You know, the lyrics are a bit self-conscious, like, you know, in the first few lines, um, they're talking about iPhones and stuff. It's almost like they want to be like, yes, guys, look, we're we're here. We're now like people have iPhones. This is the present day kind of thing. But that said, you know, like it's it's very easy to listen to. Like it's a nice like breezy bop. It's got some some catchy like hooks to it. So I think like I can definitely see this going viral over summer. Like I could definitely see it being a summer tune that people will listen to. Tickets for their National Arena tour go on sale today. Do you think demand for tickets will be high? I think like there has been a lot of buzz online about it, um, but it's hard to tell how much of that is, you know, novelty factor, like end up reuniting after a decade. Their fans must be quite keen to see them. I think it does depend on how well Charmer does, because that must be like a benchmark for people. Oh, are they worth like going to see? Do they have something new to offer? Or will they just be playing the classics, you know? Opinions have seemed quite split on the song. I think some people online are saying it's too dated. Other people are saying, oh, it's classic M-dubs, that they love it. I mean, in terms of like filling arenas and stuff, you know, they, they are keeping it short and sweet. There aren't actually a lot of dates on sale. We know that their tour starts in Newcastle on November the 7th, and then they're pretty much playing a different venue every night. So November the 8th, they'll be in Glasgow. November the 10th, they'll be in Nottingham. Um, then they'll be in Leeds, Birmingham, Bournemouth. Cardiff these are all just for one night each and then November 17th they'll be in London they'll play the O2 yeah so it is literally just like a whistle stop tour and they're finishing their last date in Sheffield on November the 18th so this is literally like you know 11 days on the road so that will also contribute massively to um you know to how to how well the tickets do because you know this is a limited number of tickets so I imagine people definitely want to get them because this is their first tour in 11 years so yeah I think I think I think tickets will be in hot demand but, but if they do a tour afterwards I think that the success of that will probably depend on the songs they put out in the interim is there still a place in music for them a decade on i guess we'll see to be honest i mean yeah from my perspective the majority of the excitement is is like nostalgia factor the old fans getting excited perhaps 
if they bring new music to the table, you know, they, they've shown that they've matured, they've taken a break. I think by the end, end ups were very, uh, maybe it felt a bit like a, like a rap run for them. They were just kind of like writing new songs and playing them and not really enjoying the process so much. So maybe have, have, having had that break, they'll come to the table and like bring some exciting new tunes, like develop their sound a little bit, develop a new fan base. But like the music has moved on. You know, I can't see people getting excited if they put out the same old tunes, like use the same formula again and again. And because they're just undated. So watch the space, I suppose. And that's it from The Leader. This podcast is back on Monday at 4pm. 